Just a heads up that in this episode, we talk about some sensitive topics. If you have little ones around, please use your discretion and maybe grab some earphones. This is Misha. Hi. I love to, uh, in my free time, I love to bake. I'm a very creative person. And I also recently have taken on uh, walking and just being uh, physically active again, weightlifting to just uh, give me some confidence and uh, strength. She was married for about 10 years to her best friend. About five years ago, her marriage ended abruptly. But not for the reasons you might think. You know, my world sort of collapsed around me because the end of the marriage was uh, very sudden and very abrupt and out of the blue. Um, And it was a choice uh, of my partners and and not myself. And, uh, you know, we had a very healthy relationship in my mind. Um, We had lots of good times. Uh, We traveled a lot. I thought we had really good communication or, you know, our families got along really well. Uh, We were friends even before we, we got married. Um, so, you know, uh, we had a lot going for ourselves. We had a good home. Uh, our careers were really good. With everything seeming to be great in her marriage and her relationship, not just on paper, but also between them as friends, it seems strange that things would end. But there was one issue, an issue that they'd been having for years, one that no one really knew about, one that they felt like they couldn't talk about. There were parts of the relationship that sort of lacked that. Um, intimacy. Misha and her husband were close, but they had had trouble being more intimate. When they had tried the first number of times, she experienced pain. She didn't know what to do. She was embarrassed, and they didn't know how to communicate about it. They didn't know how to fix it. Eventually, they looked for help, but they didn't get the answers that they needed. It took years of trying, ignoring, pretending it was okay, and then one day, it wasn't. Welcome to the XO Conversations podcast. My name is Rishma Walji. I was a naturopathic doctor in clinical practice for over 20 years. I have a PhD and I am a forever student. Now I spend my time using science and clinical experience to understand how to live more intentionally, to make more meaningful changes in my life that actually make me feel more joy, more connection, more peace. And I share my insights here on the podcast. I share them online on my website and in the book that I'm currently writing. If you're looking to live your own XO or extraordinary life that you love, if you want to make every moment count in life, and if you want to discover your awareness style by taking my free quiz, you can find it at livingxo.com forward slash quiz. It'll help you understand if your goals and values are aligned and if you are taking the right steps to follow your own path to your own XO life. From the outside, it seems like, how could something like this happen? How could so many years pass without figuring out this issue? And I'm going to tell you that is so much more common than you think. There are some things that feel so private, so emotional, so shameful that we don't know what to do. I put a lot of pressure on myself thinking that, you know, it's something that maybe I'm lacking or, or something. And I took on that pressure to figure out what it is. Even if you haven't been through this particular situation, there's likely something in your life that you haven't been able to talk about. Something that you might want to hide, that you want to ignore in the hopes that it will fix itself. But some things don't fix themselves. They just get worse. And for Misha and her then husband, they had been going to doctors trying to figure out information. Why were they having a hard time being physically intimate with each other? You know, I was constantly reading on information and, uh, you know, getting supports, going to different doctors, trying to figure out, you know, like, what's wrong with me? You know, the doctors kept telling me different sort of information and diagnosis, and it never really solidified into anything concrete, which I could take and sort of, you know, be like, okay, this is where the problem really is. They were searching for information, a diagnosis, some support that they didn't find until it was too late. And um, I think that could have 
that was probably one of the reasons why the marriage sort of broke apart. Maybe it was a lot of resentment that was being held. As I sort of reflect now, you know, years later, what could have been done better? When I was in clinical practice, a lot of my patients would come to me with issues related to hormones, fertility, intimacy. And it became a normal part of my practice to ask questions about intimacy and a couple's sexual connection. What I found was that often it was not something that people had discussed with anyone before. And it wasn't asked about, it wasn't explained, it wasn't explored. And that's why I wanted to share it here. That's why Misha wants to share her story for others who might be in a similar situation where they want to talk about it. They need to talk about it, but they don't feel comfortable. They haven't been given any details of what might indicate an issue. Like, for example, if you have pain or bleeding, they feel shy or ashamed or afraid. There's such a taboo around this topic of intimacy, but it is a fundamental part of relationships. I thought I had, we had open dialogue and open communication. I think we didn't speak about a lot of the important topics that were happening um, between us. And it was sometimes swept under the rug. And I think that was the wrong thing to do even though I was trying to get all this sort of help and support, don't think we were doing it together. And I think that's where I was, again, taking a lot of the stress on myself and thinking that it was me that was causing that sort of drift in our relationship. Misha shares that she never really had any conversations with her friends or family about intimacy. It wasn't something that was discussed openly. And I think that's common with many families and in many cultures. My background um, being South Asian in our family, I don't ever recall having discussions about intimacy or, you know, what happens during marriage, what, you know, are some of the expectations. And that could have been one reason why, you know, we're not informed. I wasn't informed. And it was probably because maybe my mom didn't feel comfortable talking about it, or maybe, you know, she was never brought up with this information either. So how do you talk about something that you don't even really know how to figure it out in your own mind? I used to see this all the time in practice. People would talk to me about their symptoms and then I'd share information about their bodies or their hormones. And it became something that I would just do regardless in case they didn't want to ask. I would say, stop me if you already know this, but this is how your physiology works. This is how your anatomy and your hormones work. Now tell me what you're experiencing. And I honestly can't recall ever when someone said, yep, I knew all of that. Because we don't talk about hormones. After we learn the basics in school, and certainly in the case of intimacy, we never really learn what it means to connect with someone on that level, just beyond protection against getting pregnant or protection against getting an STD. In school, obviously, you learn about the biological parts of your body and, you know, how to do certain things, but the emotional part of it um, is not talked about at all. And I was never in a position where I heard information about, you know, what happens during marriage and what you're supposed to do and um, things like that and how important intimacy really is in a, in a relationship. Um, and, you know, and I never felt comfortable enough to talk about it with my family or my friends, actually, even my best friends, I couldn't have this dialogue with because I just felt there was something wrong with me. And I just really felt really ashamed that I'm a woman and I can't even, you know, like have you know, perform certain things. And again, you put a lot of pressure on yourself and um, and you're not educated enough and there's not enough information on this. And if you seek out information through books and internet and doctors constantly seeing doctors and like therapists and things like that and it really plays um very heavily on your mind and your emotional your confidence as well as a woman like I there were a lot of times where I was even confident in my own being because I felt less of myself and that's not something that any woman should actually have to feel uh, whether you're in a relationship or not There's so much pressure and so many misconceptions out there, not to mention miscommunication that ends up happening between partners. There's the expectation that you'll just know what to do and you'll figure it out. But what I found was that so many people don't. They have pain. They have fear. They don't experience physical pleasure easily. 
they have questions that go unanswered. I think most of the time I felt that I was failing at something. And again, as a, as a woman, we want to be so perfect at everything that failure doesn't come to mind. And when you're um, put into this type of situation, and especially after my separation, when I was doing a lot of reflection back, I, I, I went into this hole of I failed the marriage. And what could I have done differently again? And and it's like almost like this black dot or black stamp on you now. Like, oh my God, like now I'm, you know, divorced. And um, it's a failed part of my life that I should have done better. Sadly, like Misha, many people who struggle with intimacy don't get the answers they need from doctors or even from the internet. Obviously, he came for the appointments and things like that, but a lot of times it was the doctor speaking to me, you know, checking me out physically and in, you know, in areas where already I'm uncomfortable. And now, you know, you have this, this man. And a lot of the times there were, there were male doctors, um, you know, telling a woman, this is your problem and you need to fix it. And not talking to him about, you know, where are your challenges? You know, talking to him about, you know, what could you do to support your partner? When discussing intimacy... Both people involved need to be able to support each other, express their needs and their concerns. It's not always easy, whether it's because we're concerned about the other person or we don't know what we need or what we're supposed to feel. One major issue is that it's easy to get stuck in your head, thinking, analyzing, judging. And there can be a lot of pressure on the actual act, the penetration or the orgasm, both of which could be absolutely discussed. But there's also many other ways to be intimate with each other as a starting point or even as an ongoing basis. Some couples lose other aspects of intimacy that create connection and trust, like holding hands, cuddling, deep conversations, sharing vulnerability. I think a lot of times when we were trying to be intimate, I was trying to be as present in the moment as I could. But I I also was fixated on the pain of uh, of, of the you know, the performance as well. And that gave me a lot of anxiety. I've always learned it's a pleasurable experience. And, you know, you never hear about pain. You look at all these like shows and movies and it just happens so seamlessly. And those images get put into your mind about that's how it should be. But no one talks about, well, no, there is pain for a woman. You know, for me, that was like, oh, like, wow, I got, I didn't even know. And there, there's pain, there's, there's blood. And a lot of anxiety and everything just, you just freeze up. And that's the kind of feeling I was experiencing. I wasn't enjoying the moment. To me, it was like, if this is how it feels, I don't want to do it. Because um, it's it's not a pleasurable moment for me. You know, and then you go down this path and then you're not even in the present moment. Your head is like totally somewhere else. And then you think about like, oh, your friends or your your relatives who have like or just popping out kids, like left, right, and center, like three, four kids. And I'm like, I don't understand. Like, this is supposed to be a normal physical activity. <laughs> Yet here I am I, as a woman and I can't even perform it. And I'm like, you know, and then it comes back to, okay, it's me. There's something's wrong with me. I need to figure this out. So those were all the thoughts that I was going through while I was trying to be intimate with my partner. And it just threw off the entire experience. And, and there was no relaxation at all like, okay, this isn't working. Let's just stop. And I, you know, I just felt kind of numb. It's like, okay, like, that's it. Like, there's no conversation beyond this. This experience actually happens for many people. Some people might get caught up in their ability to perform or to manage their stress levels, or they have negative past experiences, or maybe they're worried about their ability to satisfy their partner. Sometimes it's about the outcome of sex, like if you're trying to have a baby. There's so many things that can get in the way of being present and in the moment. If you had a pain in your leg, you would get it looked at. People would talk to you about it. You'd ask questions on how to heal. But when people have challenges with intimacy, there's no open conversation. It often comes down to private chat room online searches or something like that late at night. So let's lay it out here. There are many issues that come up for people of all genders and identities. There could be vaginal pain that causes discomfort, 
That's due to many factors. It could be infection or trauma or dryness or endometriosis. The list really goes on for a number of reasons. It happens for so many reasons. And it is quite common. And most of the time, there are ways to help. Other issues could be penile pain or erectile dysfunction. Literally, there's so many things that could happen to change or impact your ability to be intimate with your partner. And I think the point here is that there is information out there. We just need to be able to have it more accessible and to remove some of the shame or the fear or the embarrassment and the taboo about asking and talking about it. I had a conversation with someone the other day and she was telling me about an issue she had on a date that she was on. And she stopped herself in the middle of the story and she said, oh, I'm sorry, this is a TMI. And I laughed and I said, uh, I used to do YouTube videos about sperm health and vaginal discharge. There is no such thing as too much information as far as I am concerned. <laughs> Unless you don't want to talk about it, I am all ears. <laughs> I want to facilitate conversations because I think they need to happen. I'm even trying to have more detailed conversations with my kids as they get older. More on that in a future episode. The point is that there's a stigma associated with intimacy, and like any other stigma, it interferes with people being able to get the help that they need. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people who didn't want to talk about it because they felt like it was dirty, or they shouldn't enjoy it, or they should already know what to do, or they felt ashamed because it was somehow representing their manhood or their womanhood or their identity countless conversations I've had with patients over decades of all backgrounds and genders. The fact is most of them felt relieved when I'd bring it up because they could finally ask questions like, how can we make it more pleasurable? How can I help if it's painful? How can we be more in the moment when we're stressed about fertility? How can I talk about it? How can I describe what I like and what I want without seeming too demanding? How can I increase my libido because I just don't feel like myself anymore? What can we do to try to stay fresh in our relationship and our intimacy? How can I manage breast sensitivity at certain times of the month? What do I do about dryness? How can I last longer? How can I be more in the moment when I'm focused on my partner? And the list goes on and on. Now, I am not a sex therapist, but these are questions that I would eventually be asked and I would feel honored that they felt safe and comfortable to ask. Usually I would answer, but obviously if I didn't know the answer, at least I could refer them to someone who did. I asked Misha if she would go back to her younger self. Is there anything that she would tell herself, something that she wished she would have known so that if someone is listening right now and they're on that journey... What kinds of things would she suggest to them? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. And um, I think just going down to the very, very basic level of, you know, when we get on our period and, um, you know, we're, we're taught to wear, you know, pads and maxi pads and all of that. But I don't know, maybe it's a taboo thing again in, in our my family. If I had, you know, started to learn how to wear tampons earlier on, um, you know, maybe that would have helped um, you support that, that pain and that feeling of something being penetrated inside you learn about yourself and, um, be one with yourself. You know, a lot of people, um, they, they don't talk about, um, masturbation and things like that. And I think, uh, again, that's such a taboo topic to talk about. Um, I, I wish that was a little bit more educated and informed at a younger age, um, you know, talking about not just the physical aspect of, of, of two people, but, um, you know, what you should be doing just with yourself and making sure that you learn your body, um, how you feel, um, parts of your body, like looking at a picture versus, you know, exploring yourself. I think those are two different things. And I think that's something that I wish um, I was educated on. She talked about some of the basic physical things. But she also said that what she didn't have was a lot of experience with dating. And so she didn't know what was, quote, normal for her and what was something that might need more attention. But that's probably something else that I would have probably told my younger self. Just kind of go out there, explore and, and educate yourself. Um, 
and and talk to women, talk to other people, talk to people who you will support you. My sister has told me so many times, she's like, I wish you had come and told me. I wish you had opened up to me. I wish you had just come and just openly talked about what your issues were and what your challenges were. Um, so there are people out there who are there to listen to you and are there to support you. So find those people um, and talk to them. Even as you are growing up, you you need that support system. You need that trustworthy person to go and talk to, whether it is a therapist. And if you feel you're having, you know, these types of issues, then um, I encourage you to like, you know, like talk to a therapist, whatever kind of therapist it is that you need. I wish if, if I had known I would experience something like this in my marriage, I would have done whatever I could to have prevented it. I asked her why she never talked to her sister, because often there are people who are willing to open up with us and share, but we might not know that, or we don't know how to communicate a sensitive topic. Yeah, it never came up. I mean, the discussion about, oh, when are you having kids? That was really uh, a trigger point. And I would always just kind of sidetrack the conversation like, oh, we're not, we're not ready yet. We're not, we're not going to be having kids. So we've decided not to have kids or whatever the response at that time is supposed to be given. Yeah. I, like I love my sister, but this was just something that I couldn't get myself to tell anybody. Um, and I held it on for like a good seven, eight years um, in my marriage. And the only person that knew was my partner. And that's it. And any of the doctors that I was um, seeing, because I was trying to figure it out on my own. And that was probably the wrong approach. And I think if, if I had sort of talked to my mom or my sister about it earlier, they could have probably provided me a lot more guidance and support um, and led me in different areas, which I may not have even thought of. And I think I, I was ashamed. I think I was ashamed. Um, I've always strived to do uh, the best. I've always been a perfectionist. So I was like, this is, this is not right. This can't be it. I'm going to, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to figure it out on my own. Um, Cause I always figure out stuff on my own. Um, so this is just another thing. Um, so I let that continuously go on and on and on. And uh, yeah, I was just, I think I was just at a point where I was just ashamed to talk about it. And I didn't know what the reactions would be. I don't know like I didn't want to be laughed at. I didn't. I didn't want to be judged. So yeah, I, I I couldn't open up to anybody. I think it's incredibly brave of her to open up about her story. It's really vulnerable, and I want to share here that she is not alone. There are so many things in life that we feel like we should just figure out ourselves, and intimacy is one of them. In fact, it's something that ends up getting ignored. Similar to other things in life that absolutely should not be figured out alone, like mental health, it's not always easy to find support, but there is support out there. For Misha, I asked her about communication with her partner. If she wasn't able to talk to anyone else, was she able to talk to him? Yeah, I think it was more of, we'll talk about it later. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I think that was a lot of our responses. And let's, let's see what the next doctor says. Let's see what, you know, well, we'll go to the next therapist and, you know, maybe it's a psychological thing. Maybe it's not a physical thing. Maybe it's all in your head. Um, so, yeah, let's let's see what the next doctor says. So, yeah, we, we constantly kept sweeping it under the rug, um, hoping that the next person that we see will give us that magical answer that we're, we're searching for. We just kind of went on our, our day to day sort of life like, OK, so where are we traveling to next? And you know, what's, uh, what's happening in the next, with family, what events and social life and friends and things like that. But we didn't sit down. I don't recall ever sitting down and actually having a conversation about this and saying, okay, this is, seems to be something that we're struggling with. What is the best way to tackle it? I, cause I was just going and just doing my own research and finding, uh, you know, doctors and appointments and things like that. But I don't think we actually sat down and had a very genuine, open conversation about this at all. I think her story represents a lot of relationships. Even when they can or do have penetrative sex, or when they are able to be intimate, there's still so much that happens in relationships over time. You feel stressed, your body changes, you have kids, you fight, your libido changes, life happens. 
And intimacy is one of those things that always is evolving and changing. And the conversation is an important one to keep revisiting. Now that it's been a few years, Misha has learned a lot and healed a lot. And I'm happy to say that she's reached a place where she feels more happy and more comfortable and more confident in herself. Um, I'm definitely in a much better place. I think um, emotionally, um, I've had to really do a lot of reflection and figure out things about me and, and find out where I need to get support from. I'm talking a lot more about this kind of conversation with family and friends, maybe not in so much detail, but you know, th- there are dialogues happening now, which previously would have never happened. I asked Misha after all this happened, how did she move through rediscovering herself? you know, what I went through in terms of the the divorce and separation and all of that, it took me a while to kind of even try to figure out who I was again. My whole life was built around my marriage and my my future goals and all of that. So, you know, when you look at intimacy, I went to my trustworthy people and I'm like, you know, how do I move forward with with some of this? And I got advice on, you know, do things you would not normally do, like go to an adult shop and just explore, like just walk around, (laughs) like it'll be awkward. Um, But just go do that. Do that for yourself. Look at things like there's so many things out there (laughs) that people, you know, use now. Get comfortable with things. Say those words, you know, say penis, say vagina. Like we don't even say those words out loud. Be comfortable saying things like that. And then, you know, watch things that are not looked upon as appropriate and just you know, be uncomfortable, but it, it'll help for you to kind of grow and move forward. I pushed myself, I had to really push myself out, and out of my comfort zone, completely out of my comfort zone to go and learn about things like this and feed that information to me to, to unlearn some of the things that I had to, I had learned. And then in terms of just overall trying to find myself as a woman, like I, I started to travel. I needed to travel. I needed to go out and and see what's out there and, and just be with me. And and I did that. I, I went on a trip. I, I went to, um, an, you know, a outside sort of place and just spent time with myself and, and learned about me. And that helped me grow in my personality, in my approach of life, in my approach to my next relationship, um, in my approach to how I want to be treated as a woman in a relationship and as a partner. And I think having that open dialogue is is so key um, to understanding each other's needs and um, and learning together. I think that's important too. Like be vulnerable, be silly. I think the other thing I've learned is to don't be so serious about it. It's supposed to be fun and exciting and um, not this like test that you're doing or an exam that you're trying to perform, like just be yourself, just be relaxed, enjoy, you know, put some music on, have some food, like be creative in different ways to be intimate. Um, and it's not always just about penetrative sex. And I think that's something that I've really strongly learned from just talking to other women or reading blogs or videos and uh, of other women struggling. There's something really powerful about learning, not just about your partner, but also about yourself, your needs, your body, trusting your partner, and more importantly, trusting yourself. When you've been in a a marriage for so long, you put everything to your partner to to support you, to trust you, to have that foundational, and then it goes away. And then you're supposed to meet somebody else and all of a sudden build this back up again. It, It doesn't work that way. It's extremely difficult. You're being so vulnerable and open and you don't want to be judged. Uh, again, you don't want to be laughed at. You don't want to be like less look like less of a woman and having the right partner to go through this emotional cycle with you again and building that trust is, is so key and, and so important. Trust to me hits very, very hard I don't, to my heart too, because it's taken me a while to even uh, give that to somebody after what I've been through. Misha is now in another relationship, and she's been having more open conversations. With any partner that I have, I'm being open now more, 
terms of intimacy and my needs and my challenges and hoping that they understand where I'm coming from and um, I get that support back. So um, I feel I've become more vocal about it's not just me. Um, if there's certain things that are happening and, um, you know, I feel like maybe it's the other partner, I'm, I'm, I'm calling it out. I'm like, maybe you need to get yourself figured out first. And, um, you know, then we can see how to move on, move this relationship forward. But I'm not taking that pressure of it's just me. I think I've learned the hard way that it wasn't me. <laughs> it's taken me a long time to even say that out loud, that it's, it wasn't me. So I'm in a good place in terms of, you know, mentally, um, emotionally, sort of how I feel about intimacy, researching more about like different ways of being intimate. So I'm, I'm kind of focusing my efforts on, you know, other ways of doing things um, in your relationship and making sure that spark is still there, that connection is still there. So, yeah, so I, I feel like I've definitely grown as a woman in terms of, of that. And um, it feels good. It feels good to kind of be a little bit empowered and um, know that there's other women out there struggling with the same sort of issues that I've been struggling with. And um, I'm not alone. And uh, that's always a good feeling too, that I've learned over the past couple of years. I know it's not always easy to talk about with anyone, let alone on a podcast like this. I want to send a huge hug to Misha for sharing so openly and vulnerably because I really think people need to hear it. Not only her story, but also that they're not alone. And it's okay to talk about it. It's possible to lead the discussion and feel empowered to make change as needed. I'm going to keep Misha's details private, of course. But if you want to reach out to me and let me know your thoughts about the episode, I will be sure to share them with her. You can send me a private message at hello at livingxo.com. If there's someone that you think needs to hear this episode, please share it with them. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. And if you have a moment, please write a review on iTunes. You can always reach me and get any of my free resources on my website, livingxo.com. Thank you so much for joining me.